All right, here I am at the ScreenWave offices. Now you guys know I've been doing a lot of collection videos lately. Recently did that one on Atari, but today we're gonna be checking out Justin's Gengar collection. Over here we got some Board James and ABGN title card art. Now let's go down the hallway. Hey, there's the Sword Quest episode. And over here we got the Rob the Robot title card, but let's keep pressing on to Justin's office. Justin. He's expecting us today, this is weird. Justin. Clearly this is his office. Justin? Hey Justin. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, 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 Mike! Oh. It's not what it looks like. I wasn't making him kiss or anything. <laughs> Before we get to my Gengar collection, I wanted to talk to you guys about Neokio. Neokio is an intermediary service for buying items from Japan. As a Baka Gaijin, I always find it difficult to get things from Japan because of various barriers, be it language, payment, shipment, it's usually a mess. But Neokio makes it easy. Find an item you want and fill out a purchase request. The Neokio staff will then buy it for you. It'll then be shipped to their warehouse and verified. From there, it can go directly to you or be consolidated with other purchases into one shipment. You can even use their website to search Yahoo Auctions, Amazon Japan, Suragawa, Makari, Rakuten, and even do pre-orders. I actually got all of these Gengars using their service. They're basically a fantastic middleman. I couldn't build up a collection like mine without Neokio, who I gotta thank for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in the description to use Neokio today. All right, now let me get back to showing Mike Matei the fruits of my addiction. I, I mean, hobby. All right, today I have Justin here to show us his crazy Gengar collection. Now, I don't know anything about Pokemon at all. Okay. I don't know anything about Pokemon. I only know about Atari. The only thing I know about is Atari. And that's why I did an Atari collection video because I know about Atari 2600. So I'm gonna need Justin to show me all about this stuff, just like we did the Animal Crossing video together. Yeah, I know about Animal Crossing and I know about Pokemon. 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 That's how it's pronounced. Get it right. So how long have you actually been collecting all this? Uh, let's see, I've probably been collecting Gengar stuff for about 10 years now, but it's gone exponentially the last couple years. I can so, see that. Yeah. Now, why is it you like Gengar so much out of all the Pokemon? Um, ghost Pokemon are my favorite type, and I really like Halloween shit, and I like the color purple, uh, and the entire Gengar evolutionary line is pretty awesome. Plus Gengar is really good in the video game. I've actually run a competitive mono ghost team since Gen 4, which uh, Gengar is usually the cornerstone of. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you play Pokemon in the 90s? <laughs> On and off. I played Blue at launch, but I didn't play again until Platinum came out, which is like Gen 4. And to be honest, when Pokemon Blue came out, I didn't have a lot of friends in middle school, so I never got to trade Haunter to get a Gengar. So now I funnel all my insecurities into having a big Gengar collection. They are my friends now, Mike. My only friends. Hmm. Yeah, so today I want to show off my collection. I have some newer stuff, some older vintage stuff. I have a lot of handmade and knockoff stuff. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just go kind of section by section until we do the whole room. There is a lot. There is a lot of this. Thank you. Uh, let's start with the top shelf with this big boy. It's probably one of the oldest and biggest plushes I have. Probably my favorite too. It's a 22 inch jumbo cuddle pillow plush. And as you can see, the entire top shelf of the collection are mostly larger plushes and this guy barely fits up here. All right, so going down a shelf, we have more luxury items. Ah, so these are Gengar luxury items here, otherwise known as purses. <laughs> I have a lot of Gengar purses, yes. uh, You do. How many purses do you ha own, Justin? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven. Some of these are clutches, some of them are wallets, are a little different than a purse, but... Yeah, uh, and then I see a jewelry as well. I have some jewelry. I have the You Treasure stuff. I have the uh, silver necklace and the silver ring that came in this nice, like, container here. So, like, you have all this Gengar stuff. Is this because you already had 
What would, like, did you only recently get into collecting the Gengar purses? Because you already had this gigantic Gengar collection, well, and then where you're like, I need to have the purses because I collect everything Gengar. The, the Gengar purses came out this year. Okay. Yeah, so those 12 pieces to the Samantha Vega Gengar collection, and I think I might be one of the only people that has every piece probably, especially in the USA. Uh, Samantha Vega is the offshoot brand of Samantha Thavasa, Thavasa, I think that's it, which is a luxury fashion house in Japan. I bet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so aside from all the luxury crap, if we drop down, we get more random items because pretty much there's no real theme to each shelf aside from the luxury crap. Everything's very random and just placed wherever they kind of fell. We have weird stuff like this Gengar face mask peel, these boxer briefs that I assume are clean, the Ocean Bomb grape flavored seltzer for some reason, and probably my favorite thing here is the Gengar Croissant Plush, which was a blind box item from the Pikachu Bakery set, and it was sold in uh, 7-Elevens. Um, but I really like the Haunted Pokemon Village collection that they just released at the Pokemon Center. That's this guy right here. Mm -hmm. It looks like a little haunted house. Like, you know, they have like a little Christmas villages that people usually get. Mm -hmm. Now Pokemon Center is doing like a uh, haunted one. There's like a set of them. It's uh, it's pretty highly detailed for how much it costs, like 40 bucks. Um, there's a few in the set, but this one is the Gengar house. Uh, one of my favorite things about it is on the front step, there's a candy bowl, which is actually modeled after the one they released last year. Um, it's on the doorstep and I have it on the top shelf over here. This, this thing? Yeah, so so that's the bowl that's on the step there. It is? Yeah. So I see you got a custom Game Boy there. What's that all about? Oh yeah, that, uh, that's from 8-Bit Aesthetics. It's uh, backlit, which is nice, and has a copy of Pokemon Blue loaded on the custom cart. All right, so that is the entire first shelf. We have four more shelves to go, so let's mosey on down. That's the best part of the video right there. Yeah. Honestly, I honestly do want to know, because I collect stuff too, where do you get all this stuff? Like eBay or like, what do you do? eBay mostly, conventions, Mercari, Amazon, Etsy, Yahoo auctions. Uh, a lot of stuff comes from Japan. I use a lot of in-between services to get stuff. I have friends in Tokyo that send me stuff. Uh, there's also what I call the Gengar Information Network. I've made a lot of friends who are also Gengar collectors and we actually you know, trade things and say what's coming out and stuff like that. All right, um, so once again, there's a lot of plush and shit on the top, but I'm not really gonna mention those unless they're just bigger, so they need somewhere to live. Yeah. I'm more interested in like the other shit, like the VHS tape is cool. I used to like the little Tommy figures, uh, which you probably, like, is this Tommy, like right here? Yeah. Or, like, oh, this yeah. guy, like this guy, I think I had that at one point. Yeah, I think it's actually a Takara Tomy uh, figures. I have a bunch of them. Um, these always go for a lot online and is one of the longest running figure series for Pokemon. Um, there's a ton of variants and colors for these specific ones. I like the transparent ones the most. I know you like that too. Um, you also see it branded as Monster Collection or Moncoli for short. Um, I love that Pokemon CD-ROM <laughs> up there. It looks like a GameCube game. Yeah, it's one of those tiny weird shaped discs that a bunch of dumb, uh, you know, edutainment games had. Back in the day, they'd come in cereal boxes or whatever. Um, yeah, and that one's from Comp USA. It still has a tag on it. Remember Comp USA? Anybody? I remember Comp USA. Yeah. I remember all that shit. Other highlights over here is um, there's the Gengar Mini Skateboard, which is kind of like a tech deck fingerboard kind of thing. Um, I have a, a lot of Lego knockoffs, including the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Mega Construct Gengar, which is right there. I'm still thinking about Comp USA. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> You remember the Gateway store with all the cow shit, print oh, shit? I love the cow shit. You had that signed by somebody? Oh, the what's VHS the tape? Yeah, what's the signature? It's signed by uh, Stuart Zagnet, who was the voice of Professor Oak. I oh. did some videos with him like- Did you actually ago. get it signed? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I met with him, we shot like a video or something, and I said, hey, you mind signing this Pokemon tape? And he said, sure, wonderful. And <laughs> Oh, and the tape is also unusual because Gengar has white eyes on the cover instead of his signature red eyes. So, yeah. So Mike, below this shelf, we have a lot more fun stuff, including the giant pin collection I have. That's a pretty substantial Gengar pin collection you have, Justin. Yeah. Where do you, now where are you getting all these Gengar pins? Uh, these are mostly from Etsy and various um, artist alleys at conventions. Um, and if you notice, a lot of them have Clefable, the uh, pink fairy Pokemon in them as well. Um, because the Pokemon lore closely ties Gengar and Clefable together. Gengar is kind of like Clefable's shadow or doppelganger, get it? Doppelganger, Gengar, Doppelganger. So th that's kind of cool, but we got to talk about Pokemon history for a second. Mm -hmm. 
Rhydon, Lapras, and Clefairy were the first Pokemon ever created by Satoshi Tajiri. So this Clefable shadow thing started pretty early on, but ended up not really mattering much. And I guess it's kind of a myth or a well-established fan fiction, so I'm not sure why we talked about it. Well, I heard also that Birdo and Yoshi are also a pair because in, there's, a, there's a line in Mario Kart Double Dash that like puts them together. So Nintendo, I guess, can, do we call this Nintendo even? Kind of, it's kind of... It's like a multiple companies own it. I mean, Nintendo has a stake in it. Game Freak, kind of. Creatures Inc., Nintendo, it's kind of weird. Okay, if I have another, just looking at this over here. So if you ever get, you know, in an accident or you get cut, do you actually use Gengar Band-Aids to heal yourself? I try not using my Gengar Band-Aids unless I really need to. There's other Pokemon yeah. ones in there I can use. You could go to like CVS and get like Batman Band-Aids. Like why are you going to use these special, special Gengar Band-Aids? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. So it looks like you have cards stuck on all the walls here, so... Yeah, I didn't have enough, like these shelves are kind of weird and I didn't have enough, enough room for the cards, so I just kind of stuck them to the sides to kind of flesh out where they could go. It's a good decoration, it fills the space well. Yeah, and I'm not really that big into the Pokemon card game, so I actually haven't collected every Gengar card, but I'm working on it. Um, you know, I just stick them wherever they can fit, Mike. I have a few uh, favorites, but they're not really sorted in any way. The ones that are pretty awesome are the pink Team Rocket card, uh, the Battle Fiesta Pikachu thing, Let's see, and uh, I, I like this setup here. I also have a ton of stickers, vending machine cards, and various other things. So how often do you drink out of this glass? <sighs> that glass, not so often. The other one, uh, every day. Ooh. Do you actually drink out of it? No, I don't. Either. That one's kind of cool. Um, that one, actually, this one actually comes from Japan. It actually holds a dessert at the Pokemon Cafe in Tokyo. Gengar has a really, really long tongue. Yes, the better to lick you with, Mike. Is, is Gengar's tongue any match for Licky Tongue's tongue? Licky Tongue probably has a longer tongue. He should, his name is Licky Tongue. Licky Licky probably has the longest tongue. Who the fuck is Licky Licky? The evolution of uh, Lick a Tongue. He should eat some uh, like likes from Zelda. Ugh. I had to get my Zelda in there. Yeah. Somewhere. It's a Nintendo video, leave me the fuck alone. All right, so that is shelf two, and we can finally move on to shelf three. So our Gengar and the ghost Pokemon actually ghosts? Um, so ghost Pokemon basically use ghost or soul energy for power, um, kind of like fire Pokemon using fire or, you know, uh, fighting Pokemon using chi, psychic Pokemon using mental energy. Um, they're technically alive, I guess, but they just like to hang around wherever souls are, like graveyards and shit. Um, but I wouldn't say they use dead souls as few as much as it's like a Japanese spirit guide kind of a thing. But speaking of ghost Pokemon, um, I usually don't collect a lot of group things where Gengar's with a bunch of other Pokemon, but I really like this PVC statue here. Uh, so this figure is from Mega House's uh, Gem EX collection, and it's the Pokemon Monsters series type ghost assemble. Um, you can see Gengar, Mimikyu, and several other ghosts just bursting out of this dark energy void. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Usually you don't see super high quality stuff. For Gengar Pokemon, and Mim Mimikyu? Mimikyu. It's like Pikachu, but uh, different. Ah. It wants to be Pikachu. Is this like an onion? What's that? Uh, that's Chandelure. It's a chandelier. Okay, Chandelure. Yeah. Uh huh. Is like Lumiere or some shit. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. That's just what it is. You're right. This is the Pokemon Scale World collection, and you can see it's with the Clefable again, which has been a reoccurring thing so far. Who's this like person who's the same size? As I thought, because I okay, really though, I don't know a lot about Pokemon. Yeah. So, but when I've seen the show, it's usually like Ash has like Pikachu in the fucking ball and throws him out or whatever. It comes out. Yeah. And usually they're like really small compared. Yeah. So why is she the same height as this? Well, Gengar is about four and a half feet tall. Okay. In, in the canon, I guess, and that's Leaf from the games, I guess. I think. Um, these are actually the um, Pokemon Scale World figures from Bandai. They are one twentieth scale figures and. By scale, I mean everything in the set is scaled proportional across the entire series. Um, usually with like the figures and plushes, the sizes are all over the damn place, but these are more exact. So Pikachu would be like really tiny in the series, but Lapras is huge as shit, like a tank. But if this is all Gengar, why is she here? Because both of these come in the set. Because it comes in the set. Okay. Which is like a mail order thing Bandai okay. did in Japan. So this is, I think, a Nintendo Power issue? No, it's not. It's not the same size as one. It must be like a comic book? That, What's the deal with this? That is Pokemon Power issue number three. These were inserts that you'd have to tear out of your normal uh, Nintendo Power magazine. Um, I think this Gengar one was in uh, Nintendo Power 113, which was the um, Turok Two Seeds of Evil uh, okay. 
magazine. And did you actually rip this out of a Nintendo Power? No, I, I could have just went online and bought like 113 and did it myself, but someone was selling one at a convention or something and I just grabbed it. They already cut it out and stapled it together. It seems like kind of wet on the inside. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and, and, and I guess before we, we, we drop down, uh, the last thing cool on this shelf, I love these knockoff Mexican Gengars. Those are cool. And they do kind of funny things like they, like they light up and do stuff. I like those. Yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty funny. They're probably some of my favorite things, even though they're the cheapest and the dumbest things I have. I like them. All right, so dropping down, uh, we have another more random display. And much like the pin collection over here, we have the um, like key ring and keychain collection. I guess keychains and having a ton of shit hanging from your phone is actually kind of a big thing in Japan. So they make like a ton of Gengar keychains. Um, but of course, a lot of these are US based and are from like Etsy or conventions, like they're custom made things that artists made or whatever. I like I like this guy because I have uh, the McDonald's like Mario figures yeah. and there's like a Mario that's like this. This looks like legit old. Yeah, I don't think that's going to bounce anymore. Let's find out. Nope. Nope. You were right. Yeah. Fuck. But you know, this shelf is super random, but uh, one thing I like is I love this Gengar dumpling. It's super soft. Would you like to hold my Gengar super soft dumpling? I, well, I'm doing this video. I guess I don't have a choice. Is that not super soft? It is, um, it feels... Are these marbles? Yes. Those are Gengar marbles. Cool. I'm not sure where they come from or where they are, but they kind of live on that plate right now, so they don't roll everywhere. So I guess there are marbles for all the Pokemon, but... <sighs> I don't think there's marbles for all the Pokemon. Gengar is definitely in the top, definitely in the top 20, but definitely probably in the top 10 of merch. I know it's not a okay. starter Pokemon and it's not Pikachu. Like, if you tried to collect for Pikachu or like Squirtle or something, the, like, you couldn't end. Like, Gengar is a good enough, like a more popular enough Pokemon to have a lot of cool shit but not be too much. Out of the original 151, who would you say is probably the least collectible? Is there somebody that has like no fucking merch, basically, I guess is the classroom? Out of the 151, most of the 151 have a lot of stuff with them because they've been around for a while, but there are some in there that probably don't really matter. Like, I don't think anyone's looking for... <sighs> um, these Gengar headphones, uh, earbuds are kind of stupid. Uh, I have a popsicle making kit. Um, oh, and check this out. It's a Game Boy that I think Burger King put out, but the only reason I got it is because Gengar was on the stupid fake cartridge on the back. Is that this here? Yeah. You see how he's on the, he's on the actual uh, cartridge? Oh my god. And that's the only point to it. it it's... They should have put him on there instead of Jolteon. Yeah, Jolteon, I, I don't like the Eevee evolutions. I, I don't know. The Eeveelutions. So what's this white book here? Oh. This is actually one of, probably one of my favorite, more favorite pieces in the series. It's a book that came out in Japan and it's called The Gengar Behind You. There's a kind of weird conspiracy theory going on with the book too. Um, so they made 48 Pokemon Tale books in Japan, one on a different Pokemon, but only 23 were translated into English. Um, for the longest time, people thought this Gengar book was also in English called Gengar Shadow, but it turned out to be a fake. And the ISBN number um, is mixed up incorrectly with the Onyx book. Um, and apparently this was never translated into English because it's too scary for kids. It's kind of weird. It actually is pretty terrifying. Look at this first image of the, him coming after the, yeah, the crib. The, yeah. It's like kind of fucked up. Yeah. All right, Mike, now that we finished all three shelves on this side of the room, we have two more. But mm -hmm. before we do that, I wanted to stop in the middle and do a little pit stop because this is where I have my Gengar skateboard. Not to be confused with the Gengar mini skateboard we looked at. This one was produced for the Pokemon Center by Bear Walker. They make custom longboards that are really nice wall pieces, I guess, and they're also functional skateboards. Uh, this Gengar one was part of the first series of Kanto Pokemon, and they only made 150 of each. So, that's one of 150. And no, I have not tried riding it, because I don't want to break it in 50 pieces. Alright, so I know I haven't really talked much about the top shelf, where all the plushes are, uh, but people seem to really love this stupid black Gengar with an X on its tummy. It's just a knockoff. There's a red one called the Red Devil Gengar, but this is the black version. It kind of reminds me of the original game Sprite, but kind of brought to life. I don't know, it's weird. Um, and a lot of the plush have kind of made their way down here because I kind of ran out of room on top. Anything stick out to you, Mike? Uh, you know what actually does stick out? This here. This is a trailer for, let me see, what does this have to do with Gengar? Not necessarily, I, Gengar is, and this is the trailer to the Pokemon movie, is what this it's is. It's the teaser trailer, it's 35 millimeter. Uh, much like in rental reviews, I always bring up that I worked at a movie theater back in the day, and that's some, that's the Pokemon film. 
So I guess the only other cool things on this shelf is a uh, jammer, whatever the hell that is. Um, I got this custom Gengar meets Thanos thing. I'm not a big Marvel guy, but I thought it was kind of cool looking. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But, you know, much like the jammer, we can probably jam on down to the I like the box Ego shelf. box. The Ego box is probably the rarest thing in my collection. I've never seen another one for sale or anything. It's just, I've just had it. Would you know what year it's from? Yeah, so I guess Ego and Kellogg's put these uh, Pokemon waffles out in the year 2000, when the 2000 movie came out. And yeah, it's just a damn box. The number one question I get when people come in my office and see the collection are, are the waffles still in there? No, they are not. Anyway, there was a lot of Pokemon cereal, Pop-Tarts pasta, and there's actually a Gengar pasta shape, which was in the TV commercial, which is kind of funny. Um, but uh, Gengar is super featured uh, on the chocolate chip um, box. There's also one for blueberries, but Gengar is not on the blue waffle. Did you ever eat those back in the day when this was available? No. So let's see what else is on this shelf here. So over here, I, I have a lot of Pokemon uh, Treta chips. Do you put these chips into a machine? Tell me, do you know more about this or no? Yeah, I know it's Pokemon Treta. It's like a big arcade machine where you put those down and you play a game. And what's the game? It's just called Pokemon Treta. It's like, I don't know, you fight each other. It sucks, I don't know. Oh, it sucks, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I didn't know, like you put it in, it's like a slot machine kind of thing? No, or? not like a slot machine. It's like you put them on there and then they that thing appears in the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like an amiibo? Exactly. All right, okay. I have some Gengar watches and wearables. And, um, oh, and back here I have this nice Pokemon shirt that was, uh, that Pokemon shirts is actually the name of the brand. And they make, there's like a Gengar fabric that I had made. And they also made a uh, face mask because of the virus and shit. Hey, wait, wait, though. You got collectible Pokemon dog tags. Yeah, I got Pokemon dog tags. Yeah, because sometimes I hide things on the side of the shelves that aren't just cards. So you have so much stuff. Is there an item still at this point? you still don't have what's your holy grail item i guess is the question Ooh, my gengar holy grail item so the number one thing i'm looking for is this knockoff gengar dog toy it's from a company called pen plaques and it was part of this set called monster dudes from 2015. Mm -hmm. clearly they didn't have the license to pokemon uh someone who worked there thought it would be funny and just made it look like gengar and if you ever got it what would you do with it it would sit in one of these sp spaces forever and if you know where I can get a stupid Gengar dog toy, please contact me immediately on Twitter, because we need it. Get this man his fucking dog toy. He needs a, is it like a chewy thing? Like a squeak, squeak, squeak? It's a chewy fucking... squeak, squeak thing, yes. That's great. That's yeah. good. Sorry to push you into the corner, Mike, but this is the last shelf in the room. I love when you push me into the corner. Mm -hmm. All right, so this shelf has a lot of figures and really random stuff like the other ones. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this paper theater that my girlfriend built for me. It has a nice backlight too. Ah, I want to know why this Pokemon is not... So, so you're probably wondering why that Gengar is a different color. That's what I was getting at. But then I realized the whole bottom of it's pink. Like, why is it all pink on the bottom, Justin? What did you do to it? What did you do? Yeah, so that's shiny Mega Gengar. And Mike, as you probably know, shinies are just color swaps for Pokemon. Some are cool, some aren't. Regular Gengar has a notoriously shitty shiny. It's just a more muted purple. It sucks. However, Gen 6 Pokemon introduced Mega Evolutions, which basically added another evolutionary line to a fully evolved Pokemon kind of a thing. Um, Mega Gengar is usually a nice purple, but the shiny is white, kind so, of like a uh, ghost. So he's just a shiny? He's just a shiny of the Mega. I would have thought he'd be more purple, but just like a kind of like a, like this kind of color. Or something. Oh, make it more green. Yeah, I just don't like... It's just, I don't know. Mm. I don't like how they did that. I like him, though. I was hoping a Gen 7 Pokemon was going to give Gengar an Alolan form. Maybe he could be Ghost Fairy, make him pink, more connected to Clefable. Uh, but that didn't happen. And then Gen 8 came along. That was the more recent one with Gigantamax Pokemon, where Gengar looks like kind of like a gate to hell um, type thing. And his shiny's also white. So, what else do you got here? Well, you can grab that Gengar shampoo bottle. Oh uh, yeah, what, can, what do you think I could do with this shampoo bottle, Justin? Well, actually, it comes with a holder, so you can stick it right up Gengar's bum. Oh my god, that's where I was going with it. Let's, let's check this out. Here we go. It's a perfect fit. <laughs> so yeah, the Gengar shampoo bottle, it's a holder from the UK. I'm not sure why it was made, but here it is. I, I saw it on eBay and I, I had to have it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, we have the tiny terrariums. One is a custom one a friend got me. The other is from Rement. They're like the little uh, 
ship in a bottle that uh, O'Brien would make. Yeah. I always fancied myself living in a bottle. Well, I guess speaking of bottles, I have a lot of random tiny capsule figures up here. They're from those Japanese gashapon machines. They're kind of like those supermarket toy and gumball machines we have here, but a lot nicer and with better prizes. Are you familiar with gachapon? I am actually because you're gonna hate me for this, but I had some Legend of Zelda uh, little gachapon and actually Mario figures. So I, yes, I know what they are. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with gachapon, uh, gachapon, it, it's a word kind of like doki doki, like doki doki. Um, it's an onomatopoeia. Um, gotcha is kind of the cranking sound of the machine, and um, gotcha pon, and pon is the sound of the toy plunking in the tray. Gotcha pon. And did you know that Doki Doki Panic actually became Mario 2 in the US? I didn't know that. I bet you didn't. I, didn't, I did not know that. Oh, wow. Hmm. Oh, uh, last thing, I almost forgot. Behind the door, I hung up all of my hoodies, jackets, and kigurumis. I also have a few Gengar shoes and uh, a bunch of hats. Well, this is a crazy, crazy collection of Gengar stuff. I never thought that I would see so much Gengar stuff in a room all in one place. Um, I could stay here all day, but I just wanted to say, did you have anything else you wanted to point out here? Or? Yeah, I have a question for you. Uh, trick or treat? Treat. Well, the treat has been hanging out with me all day looking at the Gengars. What's the trick? Thank you for watching this entire 27 or whatever minute uh, Gengar collection video. If you want to see me showing Mike Matei uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf, uh, where I made an Arby's and Murder Dungeon, you can check that out. And if you, subs <laughs> if you subscribe to Cinemasker because of this video, wow. Uh, <laughs>